Olubenga Adenuga is from Nigeria. He's studying information systems at the University of the Wits Waterland, popularly known as Wits. He says he chose South Africa because it has some of the best universities on the continent and a rich, prestigious academic history. But the past few months have been frustrating for him. Some students have been protesting, demanding the South African government provides free education. It's like we're losing a whole year. And my fear is, are we paying another fee for a new year? Or is the, um, the session now splitting over to next year? That is the concern, really. The protests are part of the nationwide fees must fall movement. Organizers say high tuition fees make it difficult for students from poor families to get a university education. They are also angry at the government's proposal to raise tuition fees by up to 8% next year. After weeks of protests, many universities across the country have reopened. Some students are still protesting, others are back in class, but time is running out. University administrators say they're trying to do everything they can to try and save the 2016 academic year. Wits University officials say there are about 3,000 international students from more than 80 countries on this campus. Government officials are telling students they don't need to worry. We have to save the 2016 academic year, because the consequences are disastrous, not just for foreign students, but for every student out there. Their families, communities, the country and the economy as a whole. But even if fees were lowered or completely scrapped for locals, foreign students will still have to pay thousands of dollars in fees up front, plus an international levy. Mani Olubenga says he may not be able to raise next year if his studies are delayed. He has a wife and three young children back in Nigeria. A lot of foreign students caught up in daily protests on campuses across South Africa say the possibility of returning to their countries without their degrees is scary. Harumutasa, Al Jazeera, Johannesburg.